Hello everyone and welcome. I'm DJ Vicious. In this video, we're going to talk about whitelisting your Firestorm viewer, what it is, why it's important, and how to do it. But before we begin, I'd like to introduce a friend I brought along with me today, Smiley. Say hi, Smiley. Well, I guess he's not in a talkative mood. Some of you may have been considering going back to your previous version of Firestorm. I can hear your nods. But before you do, watch this video to the end as these steps in many cases solve the issues that many of you ask about or have heard about. In addition, even for the more robust user of Firestorm, you may find some useful and helpful information. For those of you who are upgrading to version 7 of Firestorm from version 6 for the first time, you will want to pay close attention to these steps as you may not have done them before. For those of you updating your current version to the most recent version, these steps may look familiar to you and will serve as a refresher. It's important to note that each time you update your Firestorm viewer, you will need to re-whitelist the viewer again. While the file names may look the same to you from a previous version, they're not. The binary in them is different and your antivirus will treat these files as something new it has never seen before. I should note that if this is the first time you are installing Firestorm on a new PC or if you have completed a clean install, you should launch the viewer one time, log in, wait one to two minutes, then log out. Otherwise, you may not be able to find some of the folders you need to complete the whitelisting steps. The sooner you become familiar with these steps, the faster you can get back to what you truly enjoy about being on the grid. By now, many of you have discovered or heard Firestorm 7 is PBR enabled, which stands for Physically Based Rendering. PBR has been a game changer for how we see things on the grid. It's important to know that PBR is not something exclusive to Firestorm. In fact, Linen Labs released PBR onto the grid in November of 2023, and subsequently into the official Second Life viewer. If you're wondering what PBR has to do with whitelisting your viewer, we're about to cover that. <coughs> what is whitelisting? In short, whitelisting is the process of telling your antivirus that a program or folder is safe. Adding a program or folder to the whitelist is also called an exclusion. If you find yourself asking, isn't my Firestorm viewer safe? Not to worry, it is. The reason we whitelist Firestorm is because as time moves on, antivirus programs become more aggressive, which means they are actively scanning your PC for threats, thus creating an exclusion prevents your antivirus from scanning these files and folders on a real-time basis. Given that Firestorm version 7 is now PBR enabled, you will encounter both Blinflong and PBR textures, which means that your cache is accessed more than it ever has been before, which means that your antivirus is going to want to scan it more frequently. The cache isn't the only reason we whitelist. Other parts of Firestorm can have lots of activities such as media, audio, voice, and more. Not whitelisting causes your antivirus to look at these as well, and if it determines that there might be an issue, it may not only quarantine these portions of Firestorm, but could damage how the viewer works, which often leads to having to reinstall your viewer. What happens if you don't whitelist, you may wonder? Not whitelisting the viewer has been linked to, but not limited to, login issues, slow resing, blank or gray textures on objects, orange cloud avatars, our personal favorite, and low frames per second, and other performance-related issues. While there are other things that can cause these issues, viewers that are not whitelisted are a common reason. Here's an important note. You may have heard or know someone who says, I've never whitelisted, and I've never had any problems. This may be true. Even for those who have really strong and capable PCs, they are working them harder than they need to because their antivirus is scanning the changes in the files and folders all the time. It is important to note that the Firestorm team has been recommending to whitelist the viewer for more than 10 years. In fact, Linen Labs now recommends whitelisting the official Second Life viewer for all of the same reasons we've been talking about here. So in short, no matter if you have a new PC, older PC, or anything in between, whitelisting your Firestorm viewer is an important first step to getting the most out of the viewer and not working your PC any harder than it has to. Now I must be fair and say that whitelisting may not solve every issue you are experiencing as some issues could be graphic settings related, internet related, or PC health related. In the event you still need some assistance from the dedicated support staff, 
They are going to ask if you have whitelisted the viewer and instruct that you do, as not doing so makes troubleshooting more difficult. Please remember, everyone on the Firestorm team from the developers to the support staff you see in chat are all volunteers and devote their time, talents, and energy to helping us enjoy our Firestorm experience. Now let's move on to how we whitelist. There are three important things in Windows we must do before we whitelist the viewer. First, be sure that the viewer is closed. Second, we want to be sure that your antivirus can see all the directories we need. And third, you'll want to remove any previous exclusions in your antivirus from previous Firestorm versions. Please keep in mind you can pause this video at any time and follow along with the steps as we cover them. As I've already whitelisted my viewer, I'm going to go ahead and keep it open for the purposes of this demonstration. Next, we need to make sure that your antivirus can find all the directories that we're going to need. At the bottom of your screen, you'll notice that you may have a search bar. If you don't, you can click on the Start button and use your search here. First, we're going to look for File, Explorer, Options. We're going to go ahead and open this. Let me bring this window into focus for you. What we're looking for, you'll notice that there's three tabs here. We'll click on the View tab. By default, Windows, here under Hidden, Files, and Folders, this radio option is selected, Do Not Show Hidden Files and Folders. We're going to want to make sure that Show Hidden Files and Folders and Drives is selected, and click Apply. Don't forget to click Apply, or these changes won't take effect, and we're going to add a few steps later. Now, what do we need to whitelist? Fortunately for us, since Firestorm 7 released, we now have the Whitelist Advisor. You can find this by going to Help, Whitelist Advisor. This window is broken down in a few different sections to help us find what we need. First, the first section here is all your folders. The second section are all the files that we need. Notice that there is a total of seven, three folders, four files. In addition, there's also a link in which you can click to go to our wiki for antivirus whitelisting instructions. If you have your viewer set up to open your browser externally in Windows, then it will open up your default browser. It will take you to the page as seen here, the firestormviewer.org forward slash antivirus whitelisting. Now, while you might see this long list of things here and think, that looks scary, not to worry, it's not. If we scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice that there's a number of different tabs here for antivirus software, Adware, Avast, AVG, Bitdefender, ESET, Malwarebytes, McAfee, Norton, and Windows Defender, which is part of Virus and Threat Protection. Clicking on either of these tabs will either offer you information about how to whitelist in that specific application, or it will offer you a link to go to that application's website, and there you can get the instructions and the walkthrough on how to whitelist in that particular software. Let's go back to our whitelist advisor. <clears throat> if you're thinking to yourself, well, great, I have this information, but I have to close the viewer, so how do I use this for reference aside from the website? Let me share with you a nice little trick. Come down to your search bar once again. Type in sticky notes. Should you have two like you see here, regular and new, select new, and we'll show you why. I'm going to select new note. I'm going to click the pop-out click the pop out button, excuse me, bring that over to here. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to expand this window a little bit so it makes it easier for us to see. You'll notice up at the top here there is a push pin. Click that. That'll keep this window always on top. You'll see why. Next, I want to come over here and since I'm a keyboard shortcut guy, I'm going to go ahead and use my keyboard shortcuts. I can click anywhere in this top box, press Control A, which highlights all the text, Control C to copy the text. I come over to the sticky note and Control V which pastes. I'll put in a couple of spaces and I'm going to come back to the second section. Again, I can click in anywhere, it doesn't matter. Control A to highlight, Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. Now, as an extra added goodie, you may notice there's a screenshot button here. This will take a screenshot of the screen behind the sticky note. So if I click this, this will add a screenshot here, which I can use by double clicking for reference at any point later. Now, let's go ahead and talk about 
how to get it done. Now, for those of you that are on Windows and you say, well, DJ, I, I don't have antivirus. Let's talk about that. If you're on Windows 10 or Windows 11, you have Windows Defender, which is part of the Virus and Threat Protection Suite. At this point, what you would do is come down to your search again, and you would type in Virus and Threat, and you'll see options for Virus and Threat Protection. Let's go ahead and open that, shall we? Now, if you have a third-party antivirus provider, you'll notice that they're here. This will show the current one that's actively scanning and protecting your computer. If you don't, you won't see this information here. To whitelist a Windows Defender, we'll come down under the header for Virus and Threat Protection Settings. We'll click on Manage Settings. In this window, we'll scroll down to the bottom to Exclusions. We'll click on Add or Remove Exclusions, and you'll get a security window, security window, which you'll select Yes. Now at this point, here we are at the Exclusions window, and this is where we'll add our exclusions. I always like to start with the files first and then go to my folders. So first, I'm going to click on Add Exclusion. Now you can see we have options here, File and Folder. I'm going to click on File. So we know, we know from here that we need to find Program Files. So we can click on C. We can go to Program Files. Here's our Firestorm release. And as I scroll down through the list, I find my Firestorm release EXE. I find my SL Plugin, SL Voice. And if I go back up to the LL Plugin, I see the Dolahan host. So I'm going to go ahead and add these. Now, unfortunately, in Windows Defender, you have to do these one by one. So it's a lot of wash, rinse, repeat. So as you can see, I've added the Firestorm Release 64 EXE. I'm going to come back once again. I'm going to add the SL plugin. I'm going to come back once again to File, SL Voice. I'm going to go back once more. LL Plugin and Dolahan Host. Now, we know that we have three folder locations that we need to grab by default. So this time we're going to go ahead and add exclusion, folder. Now, what we're looking for is the users directory. So we're going to go ahead to users, your primary user that you're logged into. And as you'll see here, you'll notice that this folder is a little lighter than the rest. This is because this is a his hidden system folder, and this is what we told Windows to show to us so we could find this here. We'll come to App Data, Local, Firestorm 64, Select Folder. We'll come back to Add Exclusion again, Folder, same thing as we did before. We'll come into Users, Primary User, App Data. This time we're going to Roaming, Firestorm 64. Now also, we're going to add another folder. We're going to come back to C, Program Files, and this time we're going to go ahead and add the entirety of the Firestorm release folder. There we have it. So now we have four files and three folders. Now some of you may have elected to change your chat transcripts or cache directory locations. In that case, you'll want to make sure that you do whitelist those. However, the whitelist advisor is a handy tool because if you told the viewer where to look or to store those things, it will show up here. So as long as you follow your whitelist advisor in where to find these items, you'll make sure that you have everything you need. Now at this point, once you've whitelisted in Windows Defender, you're going to want to go ahead and restart your PC and log in and we're off to the races. Now, for those of you that have previously whitelisted, one of the things that we talked about is that you do have to remove your previous exclusions. So in this case, if you were to come into here and look at this, you would click the arrow and select Remove. And we're going to wash, rinse, repeat on this until they're all gone. Now, Prudence would suggest okay, that if you previously whitelisted and you remove the exclusions, the best thing often to do is to restart your computer again. Technical rule of thumb. Do you always have to? No, but it's not a bad idea just to make sure that things are as best and given the best chance as possible. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and go back to here. Now I'm going to turn this off because I'm using a third party software for my antivirus. Right. Okay. 
Now, let's talk about third-party antivirus. Now, in this case, I happen to have Norton. Now, not to worry, even though I'm demonstrating Norton, many antivirus programs have much of the similar settings. All right, there's always an OK button, an Add button, an Apply, a Save, or some variation to that. So as long as we understand that and we follow the steps, everything will be right. So I come into Settings here because, again, this is how Norton is laid out. I come into Antivirus, and I come into my Exclusions. Now, what I'll do here is I'll add. One of the nice features about Norton, and some other antivirus programs may have this option, is it allows me to add multiple things at one time. So as I come into here, I'll click on my add, and we have our standard Windows Explorer uh, window here. So I'm going to come into Program Files. I come into my Firestorm release. And here I can go ahead and select my EXE, my SL plugin, my SL voice, go back to my LL plugin, grab my Delahan host, and I can add all of these at one time. And then to do my folders, I simply come back in to this. Now, as we demonstrated in Windows Defender, primary user, app data, local. And I'll click the box here, so this way it grabs the entirety of the Firestorm folder. All right, and then I'll come down to roaming, Firestorm 64, and OK and add those. And then I usually come back separately. Now, if you're using Norton and or if your program allows you, like this, to add multiple items at one time, you'll want to add all the items from the Firestorm release folder first. In other words, all of the executable files. You'll want to add those first before you add that. Because if you just add that and click the little box with the folder, it will not, even though you select them manually, it will not add all the file executables to your exclusion list. So we will come into, once more, Program Files, Firestorm Release, and Done. And then I would hit Add here, okay? And that adds everything to the exclusion list. So as you can see, and we talk about, and you folks probably see in the chat often, that if you do have multiple versions, each version does have to be whitelisted. So as you can see here, I still have beta, even though the last beta is now released, as we all know. However, I still have beta, and then I have my release version. And as you can see, each of these files are properly whitelisted. Now at this point, I would restart the computer, log in, and everything is bright as rain. I thank you all for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to stop into the FSE support chat, and we'll be happy to help out. Till next time, have a great one.